whales are huge, incredibly huge animals, easily the biggest animals alive today. The blue whale, possibly the biggest animal that has ever lived, bigger than any dinosaur. This is easy to understand in the abstract, but actually to stand next to one of these animals is a really humbling experience. So imagine you're walking along a beach and you see a dead whale that has washed up onto the beach. And as you get closer, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And you're just in awe at the size of this thing. You've never seen anything like it before. Like it's almost impossible to believe this is an actual living creature. It's dead and it stinks, but you're just drawn to it like a moth to a flame. You just gotta get closer to this amazing creature. And then you get out your phone to take a picture and put it up on Instagram. And then... Okay, it might not explode that bad, but there is kind of a thing about dead whales exploding. It happens a lot, actually. And it's just as bad as it sounds. Now might be a good time for those out there who might be a little bit more squeamish about this kind of thing to let you know that this is going to be a video about dead exploding whales. So, uh, you've been warned. So why whales and not other animals? Do they naturally produce nitroglycerin? Do they live in a Michael Bay world? Actually, the same process that causes this in whales takes place in all dead animals. When animals die, including us, bacteria in our guts start to sort of decompose our tasty innards. And when they do so, they produce gas. The gas, specifically, is methane, and it builds up inside the body, and it causes the, the belly to kind of swell a little bit, which is why sometimes when you see a dead animal on the side of the road, it looks all bloated and swollen, because it's bloated and swollen. Now, for most animals, this process doesn't produce enough gas to actually cause it to explode just because they're smaller animals, but also because they're, um, their holes are looser. And here I thought this couldn't get any grosser. Land animals don't have to worry about keeping water out of their orifices at all times. Whales do. And many whale species dive to incredible depths and there's incredible pressures down there. So they have to have, you know, pretty tight holes. But also these whales are really heavy, so when they're beached and they're in a place where they're not really supported by water the way their bodies are meant to be supported, that pressure against the ground causes their orifices to kind of seal shut. Plus whales have thick layers of blubber underneath their skin, so even if it does start to get eaten away by scavengers, it takes a lot to get down underneath that skin to where the gas is built up. Long story short, you've got a gigantic animal that builds up a lot of pressure in there with really thick skin and really tight orifices. It's just the perfect opportunity to get all explodey. So when a whale dies, its body becomes food for hundreds of animals in the sea. And in fact, the carcass can sink down to the bottom of the ocean and create its own little ecosystem down there for the bottom dwellers. But maybe because they have air left in their lungs or because the decomposition process has already built up some gas inside of them, some whale carcasses float up to the top of the ocean. And then ocean currents can just lead them onto a beach somewhere. Now there's also the phenomenon of live males beaching themselves, sometimes in mass. We don't really know why this happens. One theory is that uh, one whale might get beached or become distressed and they'll send out a signal and then a bunch of other whales will come to try to help them and then they wind up getting beached too. Now smaller whales aren't that big a deal. Scavengers can usually break them down pretty quickly and if they need to be taken back out into the ocean, it's not that big of a job. But larger whales like sperm whales can weigh up to 100,000 pounds and this can become a logistical nightmare. Often the solution is to just cut them into pieces. This might be your last resort. But as you can see from this video from the Faroe Islands in 2013, a little cutty-cutty can lead to a little explodey-explodey. The thing that sticks out to me about this video every time I see it is the steam coming out of this whale. That's... that's so gross and insane. Now the marine biologist in this video later told reporters that he did expect that this could happen, which might explain his fashionable attire. But where was this guy in 2004 when a 50-ton sperm whale washed up on a beach outside of Tainan in Taiwan? Because they had a, a different idea of what to do with it. They decided they wanted to move it to the Shizhou Natural Preserve in order to study it and maybe even preserve the body for educational purposes. So they hauled it onto a trailer, which by the way took three cranes to lift this thing, and sent it on its way. The problem is, on its way to the preserve meant passing through the middle of town. So they were slowly driving this whale through the town and of course hundreds of townspeople came out to see this thing. There were even like vendors selling snacks and hot food to the people that were gathering to watch this. As somebody who comes from a small town myself, I can imagine the kind of crowd that would turn out to see a 50 ton whale being rolled through the street. But you can probably see where this is going. 
unfortunately they couldn't. Yeah, the whale exploded uh, right in the middle of town. It showered on lookers and storefronts and cars in blood and guts. It was disgusting. It made international news. Luckily, there was not a video of it that I could show you, but the pictures kind of tell the whole story. But none of these stories come close to the exploding whale in Oregon in 1970. This is actually one of the most watched videos in internet history, literally, but in case you've been living in the carcass of a dead whale at the bottom of the ocean, in 1970, a giant sperm whale washed up on the beach outside of Florence, Oregon. It was way too heavy to move. They didn't know what to do with it, so the state highway division decided to get rid of it in the most American way possible. Blow it up. So this whale didn't explode on its own. <laughs> Man, did it explode. The idea was that uh, they were going to put so much dynamite underneath this whale that it would blow it up into tiny pieces that could then be picked away by scavengers and the birds that were already gathering around it. It's not the worst idea, but it just went so incredibly wrong. Even though they made a point to put all the explosive on the land side of the whale, hoping it would blow it into the ocean, massive chunks of blubber and whale guts just showered the crowd of onlookers that had formed to watch the explosion, even though the police had kept them a quarter mile away. A coffee table sized chunk of whale actually caved in a car. And the whole plan that the scavengers and seagulls would take care of the bits of the whale didn't work for two reasons. One, the blast scared them all away. And two, most of the whale was still there. <laughs> it didn't even budge. So the road crews had to haul it away anyway. They had to do all the things they were trying to avoid by blowing it up. It was just such a wily e. coyote Dukes of Hazard solution to this thing. It just immediately became an internet classic. So right, let's say you're walking along and you come across a giant dead whale. What do you do about that? Well, if you're like me and you live in Dallas, you freak out because what? But if you are on a beach and it makes sense for a whale to be there, uh, the first thing you want to do is not get too close to it or for the love of God, don't climb on it. Not only is there the potential that the whale might explode, according to Jack Lawson at the Canadian Fisheries Department, there's also the possibility that you might fall inside the whale and get stuck. According to an article in The Atlantic, he said, the skin is starting to lose its integrity, and if someone were to walk along, say, its chin, that is all full of that gas, they could fall into the whale. The insides will be liquefied, and retrieving them would be very difficult. He went on to say, I've fallen into the side of a whale up to my chest. It's not very nice. <laughs> yeah, understatement of the year, dude. If you're in the United States, the next thing that you want to do is call the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration because according to law, stranded mammals on a beach is kind of their responsibility. NOAA has offices all along the coast. They'll probably send a marine biologist out there to take some samples and to study the whale because a dead whale carcass is kind of a gold mine to those guys. They study whales all the time, but most of the time the whales are out in the ocean and they're just kind of hard to get to. Now after that, if the whale is stranded on a remote beach far from any towns or homes or anything like that, they'll probably just leave it there for scavengers to pick it apart. Just like whale carcasses can feed thousands of animals in the sea, same is true on the land. It might take months, but eventually nature's gonna do what nature do. But if that whale is near where people live and it's literally coating every square inch of everything with oily whale stench, well, there's a few things you can try. One option is to bury the whale, which presents its own set of challenges because you literally have to dig like two stories down into the beach to make sure that it stays there. Another option is to drag it back out to sea, which might not be an option for larger whales or for whales that have already decomposed too much. Besides, the ocean currents can always wash it right back up onto the beach. And last but horrifyingly not least, the option is to butcher the whale into smaller pieces and haul it away to the landfill piece by rotting, dry heaving piece. So next time you're walking along a beach and see one of nature's most majestic creatures laying there before you, the best option really is to just keep walking unless you want that majesty all over your face. I know some of you are thinking dirty thoughts with that last one. Stop. So hey, today's video is sponsored by Mack Weldon. Now, I've never done any kind of sponsorship for a clothing line before, but it's really important that you guys know I never do a sponsorship for a company or a brand that I haven't personally used myself. And I actually do have several pair of Mack Weldon underwear in my drawer in there that have been there for like three years. And saying that out loud really makes me realize I should probably retire those. So when they reached out and asked if I would be cool with saying some nice things about their underwear, I had no problem with that. And it gave me an excuse to check out some of the other stuff that they offer. So let me show you what I got. 
First of all, I got some more underwear because it's clearly time, but there's a reason why I've kept mine so long. They're super comfortable. They're actually engineered their own fabric for it that they call Air Knit, which is, it's soft, it's stretchy, and it lasts. I mean, seriously, my old ones still look practically new. I got some of their slippers because Zoe destroyed my last ones, but I really like these. They're, they're surprisingly breathable. Uh, most slippers make my feet sweat. And my feet are cold. So, somehow my feet are both cold and sweaty. I don't know what that's about. But these don't do that, and they're soft. I actually like them a lot. I probably should have picked up a size larger than these, but that's on me. Also, socks. Um, I've gotten really into performance socks lately, and these are designed for each foot. You know, they wrap around super snug. They make my shoes fit better somehow. And they're made from that same air knit fabric as the boxers. And they're antimicrobial, so they resist the, the foot stink. I got a new t-shirt, more of a, a workout t-shirt, but it's the same deal. It's the air knit fabric, antimicrobial, really stretchy and, and soft. I, I, I wish I could get across on video how soft this shirt is. It's crazy. And since I've been doing more traveling lately, I also got some of their travel pants. These are called the Radius Pants. I don't think these are air knit, but they're, they're stretchy and they're comfortable for those long flights. They've got zipper pockets and a little hidden pocket for that stuff you don't want people to find. Wink, wink. And I got their Ion travel kit so I could carry all my fancy face stuff so I don't look like I have the plague. Because I, I don't have these fancy lights with me whenever I'm traveling, and I, I tend to look like I have the plague. But yeah, purchasing was easy, it got to me really fast, and I'm a fan. So come for the underwear, stay for everything else. And this is just a sampling of what they have. Obviously, I couldn't order everything on the menu, but uh, if you want to go check them out, which I do recommend, you can go to MacWeldon.com, and if you enter the promo code Joe Scott, you get 20% off your first order. And by the way, they do have a try-on policy, so if you order a pair of their underwear and it turns out you don't like them, they'll refund your money and you get to keep the underwear. Just no questions asked. But my bet is they'll stay in your underwear drawer for a long time too. So go check them out, MacWeldon.com, promo code Joe Scott at checkout, 20% off. Link is down in the description. All right, please like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, maybe check out this video because Google thinks you might like that one or any of the others on the side that have my face on it. And uh, if you do like those, I invite you to subscribe. I come back with videos every Monday. All right, that's it for now. Thanks again for watching. You guys go out and I'll have an eye-opening rest of the week and I'll see you on Monday. Love you guys. Take care.